So three years ago, I started Light Mode and I basically started Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube channels from zero. Currently, Light Mode's Instagram page has 76,000 followers, something like that. Our Facebook has 75,000, somewhere around there, and YouTube right now. It started as Light Mode's YouTube channel. It is now my personal YouTube channel. Now has 12,000 subscribers, I think. So how did I do that? That's not exactly an easy task to get over 100,000 combined net worth of subscribers. Today, I'm going on a little riding trip with some friends. And we're gonna take the drone out. I've got my camera, got my GoPro, got my trusty grapes, got my lens, and what the fuck is this thing in here? Cholula. Nope. Anyways, as I was saying, building these channels, not exactly an easy task. The goal today is to get a crap ton of good ass content, such that when winter comes, we have plenty of content to kind of space out and upload because we won't be riding. My hands are getting tired. I'm gonna switch it over to this side. Am I still recording? Thank Jesus. I'm gonna kind of take you guys along. I'm gonna show you how we're like setting up our photos and what I'm taking into account. And oh yeah, by the way guys, if you're not following me on my personal Instagram page, it's mr.lightmode. I'd love it if you guys went from YouTube and followed me on there as well. Anyways, I gotta head out. I'll bring you along with me on the GoPro. I'm gonna have to pack everything up, put it on my bike, and get the f*** out of here. Let's go. All right, so here's tip number one for you guys. Building a following on Instagram is not just about posting photos and hoping people like them and start following you. You have to sort of engage with the community. You can't just be focused about yourself. Interact with other pages, especially with pages that are similar to your size. And by interacting, I don't mean this. Don't hit up pages and be like, I think your page is pretty cool. You should check out mine. Don't do that stuff. That stuff is so annoying. It doesn't build anything. That is just you asking for stuff. Don't ask for anything. Expect nothing, all right? So reach out to people, comment on their photo, like it. Heck, even follow them if you like their stuff. And that's it. And then sometimes those people will be like, oh, who's this guy commenting, you know? And they'll click on your page. And this is where you need to have interesting content. Because if you don't have interesting content here, they're only gonna look once and they're only gonna look for five to 10 seconds and then they're gone. That's where it's important to have quality content, which we'll get into later. But tip number one, engage with the community. Don't expect anything back in return. Whoa. Back with the crew, the usual suspect. Stan, static rider. I got the pole block in his face. Post the video of this ride, then <laughs> you start like dancing. Badass bikes, badass crew. Let's do it. <laughs> Yo, that's for her, not for you, man. Ah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fucking hell, dude. Whoa, you alright, dude? Yeah, dude. That was a squirrel, and they stopped abruptly. Did you get that on video? Sure did, brother. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> That's what friends are for, right? If you're gonna wipe out, do it at the front of the pack. <laughs> All right guys, tip number two. This is something I kind of noticed over the years. It's pretty obvious actually now that I think about it. We all do this, but we may not realize it. Did you know you're more likely to like or comment on your friend's post if you previously engaged with them about what that post is about in the past? That being said, if you are going out on a little like ride with a buddy to get some photos for your Instagram like we're doing. Holy cow, I gotta pick it up. It helps if you have like a Snapchat or some other account that you can kind of post live updates about your little adventure. So for example, we're going on an adventure right now. In the meantime, I'm gonna be posting stories to my Instagram and also to Snapchat such that when those people who are following us see the actual post on Instagram, then they're more likely to click like or comment because they're sort of already involved in what we're doing. Tip number three, consistency. What the f***? <laughs> what the f*** was that? <laughs> oh man. I just pictured a woman giving birth right there, but that was not what was happening. Anyways, you have to be consistent with your post. It seems like the algorithms favor that. Uh, it also tells people that you're serious about what you're doing. So that's tip number three. Once we get to our location, we start taking photos. Then I'm going to start giving you guys more technical tips with photography. <laughs> need a lift? 
Yo, this is this is epic. This is epic. Cause it feels like staring at the sun. Feels like, feels like. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tip number four, find a good location. So right now we have a nice beach location. We have water right there. We got mountains and we have nice blue sky and clouds. By us scouting our location and finding good background, we're gonna get that quality content that I talked about in the previous tip. We're gonna bring the bikes down there and line them up real nice. And we're gonna think about uh, how we wanna frame the shot. The things we do for a good shot. Oh, the sun's going. That's good. That's good. That's good for lighting. I should talk about that. Okay, Direct go ahead, man. sunlight is not good for photos. You want like scattered sun. Like if it's behind the clouds. Like if you look up there, I don't know if you can see. Behind the clouds, it's good because then your lighting is more diffused. It imitates what's called a softbox. I'm gonna take a camera from Stan. I'm gonna take some shots, and then I'll show you guys those shots, and we'll come back here. Okay, so the last tip I want to give you guys is about zooming. If you have a DSLR, it's really good for you to utilize its zoom. Don't use the zoom on a smartphone because it really doesn't actually zoom. It basically crops out the photo that you're taking. It makes your shots look a lot more professional if you use this zoom just like this because the background and the foreground become closer together and it makes a more professional shot. Well guys, I hope you learned something today. This video is in no way comprehensive. I've been in the social media game for a good three years and I, I think I, I have a decent understanding of how it kind of works given that I've been doing it pretty much full time alongside my business I've been growing the channel so if you learned something I'd appreciate it if you checked out my Instagram page mr. light mode go follow me there and you'll see uh, some of the photos from today's shoot being posted on there scattered throughout the weeks I'd also like to give a shout out to my three friends in front of me here Kyle and Vlada on the R1 on the left Kyle is also known as static rider on YouTube and Instagram and obviously Stan the motor man well known on YouTube and also uh, on Instagram as well because winter is coming up now the videos are gonna be spaced out a little bit more it's just hard to create content when uh, the riding season is dwindling yeah guys ride safe peace